Hi, I'm so sorry. I'm such an idiot. Welcome in, everybody. It's the Craft Beer Republic. Thanks for drinking. Thanks for joining. That was a lot easier to say than it was last week. I am being joined by the most responsible life insurance holder in the whole Midwest, and that is Sexy Flexi. What's up, buddy? <laughs> hey, that's not true, but also Happy New Year, Greg. Happy New Year, bud. We made it. Yeah, let's uh, fill the year with lots of new beer. Yes, I am. I'm on board with that. Uh, it is just us today. I figure, what the hell? Let's get romantic. Just yeah, let's, and I let's and... bang one out, you know, duo style. Yeah, let's bang one out, then we'll record a show. It'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. they call that a so... Dutch rudder. <laughs> Double Dutch, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so Happy New Year. Lots to get to today to talk about in our first show of 2023. I made a purchase that I hope everyone will be excited about. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I promised last week, we'll talk about Pasole Palooza. Uh, uh, don't forget our live show coming up on January 13th and some booze news. But most importantly, because the end of year brings tons of lists. We got multiple lists. I love Flex. lists. We know. We're just I we gotta get it coming a t- up on the T-shirt there. made. I love lists. <laughs> I mean, you already have one T-shirt made. I that do. Has you a list on it. <laughs> <laughs> a checked to, off list yeah to do checked off list. So, uh anyways don't forget if you're out there on the show socials crafty republican of course flex me a beer underscores in between all right uh enough talk let's get to some hydration i want to tell you guys what i'm sipping on over here Nothing like having your wireless mouse die right as you're going to click on something. I, I wouldn't know what that's like. Is it? Oh, okay. Let me tell it you. It's annoying. S- super bad? Yeah. Luckily, I have shortcuts. Anyways, nerd stuff. I am drinking Pure Project Brewing along with Virgin Beer Company collab. Home for the Holla Haze. Hey. Eight, there you go. 8.8%. Nice and light. Has a 4.16 on untapped. Very respectable. They say our annually murky. Well, it's already hit. It's already <laughs> <laughs> our annual murky double IPA release with our friends at Virgin Beer. Home for the holidays. Holidays is back. Hey. The fifth, batch, <laughs> the fifth batch of this festive brew features a bouquet of our favorite hops of the year: Citra, Citra Cryo, Rowaka, and Strata. Aromas of passion fruit, jam, ripe strawberry, and dried mango grace the nose. While flavors of lemon sorbet, guava, and orange zest dance upon the palate, packing a lofty ABV and juicy mouthfeel, home for the holidays makes a great hey. gift for the beer lover in your life, or just a nice, nice treat for yourself. And this, of course, is just a nice treat for myself. On Perfect. the sniffer, light sniff, but some tropical fruits. Mmm. The old tongue driver, though, let me tell you. Wow, your face. Wow. It, it came alive. Like, I, I haven't had this before tonight. This is my first can of this one. And, uh, woo, it is tropical. Lots of passion fruit. I'd say, like, a mango y guava vibe going on. Uh, and a little, just a hint of alcohol at the end. It's very well hidden, this 8.8%. I'm Ooh. sure by the end of this episode, it won't be so well hidden when I'm trying to read the list later. <laughs> You won't even Number, do the countdown. <laughs> right. Number nine, ten. <laughs> Shit. So anyways, uh, another good murky from... Yeah, that sounds like a banger. Yeah, the homies over at Pure. It's banging all right. I really do wish that people could have seen your face when you took that first sip. It was, it, do, you, do you watch uh, uh, Somebody Feed Phil on Netflix? No, I don't watch shows. Phil, uh, Phil Rosenthal, he's the creator of Everyone Loves Raven. Okay. Uh, he he loves food and he travels. To Wait, places did you just... like the show Everybody Loves Raymond? I never got into it. I was a little okay. young and I, I never watched wanna, the no, reruns. I just wanted to make sure you didn't like it. That's all. Oh, 
I just it was whatever. I never really got into it. Because like then we might have had like a contract dispute for like the rest of this podcast. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I didn't want to have to yeah. do that. No, we're safe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Phil Rosendahl, the producer, the creator, and all that, he's funny, and he goes to all these locations just to eat food. And every time he finds something good, which is every time, because I think they cut it out if it's not good. Shocker. Like, that's his face. It's always like, he, and he gets really excited. So oh, that's a awesome. very visual thing that nobody listening can see. It's super great, though. Like, listeners, I know, like, the first time they drink, like, certain beers, like, you know, you've never had before, and you take that sip, mm-hmm. and your eyes just kind of, like, widen, and you're like, holy balls. Like, yeah, what, whatever that's this cool. is, is fucking delicious. It's a great hop combo. Like I had this a couple years ago and it was good, but this uh from my memory is is even better. So outstanding. I love it. I'm a haze bro. Apparently. I love it for you. <laughs> I love that on a- you. And and my hazy heart, it beats for you. <laughs> yeah. Bum bum. Bum bum. <laughs> Sorry. Uh I, I made a, a bit of a purchase over the last week or so. All right. You told me I was gonna like this. I think you will. So I am extremely intrigued by this. My heart's pumping. If you recall, a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, we had our friend Deb on the show. And we did. Yep. And do you remember what we were talking about purchasing? <laughs> De- Debsdigs.com. I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you actually going to do anything with it? It was 10 bucks, so I had to. Uh, currently it, it, if you go, it just automatically redire- redirects you to the CBR website, <laughs> but I am working on a very like crude <laughs> website where it's just pictures of famous people named Dick. Okay. You know, I got a few, like, I like, you know, Richard Nixon and Andy Dick. And yeah. Guys, like so. we talked about. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, that's fucking it, Andy Dick. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to Deb, you're, you're, I will happily hand this over and gift you the ownership of this if you'd like to do anything with it. But until then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have some dicks up, dude. You're I'm making my you're and... making my face hurt too early tonight. <laughs> I want to get a picture of Deb like doing the uh, thumbs up Jesus pose from Dogma, you know, <laughs> like have that be at the top of the page, and then underneath just all of Deb's dicks. Although it w- it would be great if like her thumbs had like tiny faces of dicks on them, or just actual dicks. Or uh, you know what? That crossed my mind. But since you're doing famous dicks, that's true. That's I didn't want to bring like actual dicks into the yeah. scenario. Like a like a Nixon thumb. Yeah, or, uh, yeah. Or imagine like a kid <laughs> doing a, a book report on dicks, you know, and he goes to this website for all these famous <laughs> dicks, and like he just sees these two thumb penises, you know. And <laughs> That's you know that reminds me. I should really like load the SEO on the page. <laughs> so like if a kid's doing a, a book report on Richard Gear, like it loads Deb'sDicks dot com. You know, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be too good. Uh, this might, this might be a better idea than we we actually thought of, you know, like it might be. I'm I'm excited for it. So, uh anyways, debsdicks.com. You can officially go there now. Congratulations on your investment. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, Deb, if if you want it, I'm happy to to sign over the rights, however that works. Please don't send your lawyer boy or uh, husband <laughs> after me. I don't yeah. I don't need that lawsuit. W- where's my beer? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so debsdicks.com also I, I mentioned it last week just briefly but I wanted to to spend it deserved more time we we had uh, Pasoli Palooza at Chew's house a couple weeks ago and uh, we had a blast before I get into it it looked like an absolute blast by the way I don't know if I've was, said that it was so much fun it like, looked it, it was wonderful didn't really know what to expect you know we never went to Chew's house before and it it was there was more people than I thought there would be it was it was, it was a lot time. of like friends and family of his or what you know, some friends. I knew a couple of them. I'd met them at a beer festival. Uh, he also invited the the guys from Eight One Eight Brewing, uh, Derek and Brian, who have been on the show. And so, like, I hadn't seen them in a couple of years, basically since the pandemic. Um, a couple of his, you know, like family friends, whatever. His sister was there. It was just a good time, man. We all shared some good beers, and I stayed relatively sober. I had to brew with Monica the next morning, so I didn't want to get fucking shittered. Because the week was before, it a drive I for you? Tuesday. It, uh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, 45 okay. minutes away, okay. so it was a bit of a drive. And we'd had this issue lately with Ubers not being reliable. Um, like, we can Uber somewhere, but getting a ride home at the end of the night has become nearly impossible. Wow. Ever since COVID. Um, that so, long? Yeah, I mean, like, during, like, the, you know, the heat of COVID, couldn't go anywhere. But um, even now, it's like... You can get somewhere, but coming home is a real pain in the ass. Wow, and that like, sucks. Best case scenario, they charge you like $800 to get home. 
So like we we did uh, surf and suds back in September, and we Ubered all the way there, and then uh, Wiley from the Boozley brought us halfway back to a brewery where we had a couple more beers because we totally needed those, and then we tried to Uber back from that brewery, which was I don't know fifteen twenty minutes from our house, and at first we couldn't find an Uber, and then when we did, it was like one hundred and fifty dollars. You know we insane. we learned that in Chicago, um, taxi before Uber or Lyft. Um, oh, we don't do taxis. They don't exist. Oh, they don't. Yeah, there's no taxis. Oh, I'm here. sorry to hear that. Yeah. I mean, like, if you go to the airport, like, you go to LAX or something, like, yeah. sure, there's taxis at the airport, but it's not, there's not taxis everywhere. Well, yeah, I mean, we learned when we were, like, actually staying in the city of Chicago, but, like, the cab rides were, like, a quarter the price of anything Uber or Lyft was charging. Oh, really? Yeah. I know for a long time, the taxis were, like, we're getting beat up by uber so i bet they lowered their price yeah because we were talking to one of the bellhops there and we we're like hey like how can we get to like downtown and uh because i was like yeah all these ubers and lifts are asking like 50 or 60 bucks and it was like an eight minute drive into the city yeah and he was insane. like oh he looked at us he's like straight he's like do not do that he's like if you're gonna do anything he goes take the two dollar train into town he goes or take a taxi and sure, yeah, not, I mean, if there's sh- a train, I'll always take the train. It was like, like a, it was like a six dollar cab ride from our hotel into the city, so done. it was done. Yeah, out here we don't have taxis really; we just have Uber and Lyft. But like, like the night before Pasoli Palooza, uh, the wife had her Christmas party. It was at her boss's house, which is a nice house, like out in the middle of nowhere, kind of like in the mountains. Okay, and the boss was like, "Please Uber here." And then, you know, like, I'll reimburse all your Uber costs, A, because can't park all the cars at her house, and then B, you know, we're all drinking. She hired a bartender. It was actually a fairly fun party. You know, the wife's old job. Had Is this a new boss? Christmas. Yeah, she's okay. been at this job for about a year and a half. Okay. And so, like, the old job had the fucking worst. I, I know I've told the story of, like, setting the Zoom to break mid-Zoom Christmas party. Classic story. But this is actually pretty good. She hired caterers. She hired bartenders. It was a good time. Um, but we couldn't leave at the end of the night. We couldn't get a ride home. We tried and it wasn't even like a matter of costing too much because she was paying for it. So who cares? It was just, we could not get a ride home. And finally, one of the directors of something walked by. I was like, Hey, you guys, you guys live not too far from me, right? Like, yeah, I don't think so. Like, come with us. Like, Oh, thank God. Like, I hope everyone else gets somebody who doesn't live too far from them. Cause it was, it was impossible. So the night of Pasoli Palooza, I was like, look, I'm just going to drive. Cause I got to wake up early the next day for brewing. And it's, I don't know if we'll be able to get a ride home. So I, I drove and I didn't get hammered, but I, I tried all the beers there, you know, at least a little bit that they were pouring. Oh, so yeah. Before I say any more, Chu did <laughs> mid Pasoli Palooza record a voicemail uh, <laughs> with multiple members of the party involved, including myself. Cause I was like, that's what everybody needs. Everybody needs to hear my voice in a voicemail after they just got done hearing my more voice. More Greg so, on Greg's yeah. show. Yeah. Give it to me, baby. It's, <laughs> it's disgusting. Here it is. <laughs> to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Orale, what does Chuyu be here? Crab Republic. We're celebrating Pozole Palooza 2022. And next year, we're going to host it at 818. I'm just kidding, homie. But hey, if, they, if they're down, I'm down. All right, so I'm going to pass my phone, homies. He was trying to convince Brian and Derek the entire night to have next year's Pozole Palooza at shut down the brewery and have it at the brewery. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to just fucking leave a little voicemail for you guys you'll get a surprise on who's on this and who's not but this is chew your beer and a uh, middle finger to flex for not being here <laughs> wiley for not being here sandro for not being here uh one hot mess for not being here uh Damn. monica i'm sorry homie i fell in love with your costume but you get in the middle finger this is uh who else <laughs> i don't know people might bring you up so watch out here's the ghost Holy from Booze League here, also uh, pointing my finger at Fuck Sandra. No, she's from Crappy Republic. Oh, sorry. I, that's right. I've been coached. <laughs> I signed the paperwork. I got it. So I'm on file to record with them. But uh, Sandra and Wiley didn't didn't make it, didn't call, didn't show. Sandra didn't even show no to my friends, man. So there's Uta. that. Yeah, no pasole. Passing the phone. Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hi. I'm sorry, he's a senior oh. citizen. This is Brian from 818. Brian from 818. Happy holidays, everybody. Um, I don't know. Trevor hates. That's where my middle finger goes. Uh, next. <laughs> What's going on? It's Derek from 818 Brewing. Just uh, 
Uh, happy holidays. Uh, happy Pozole Luza. Pozole Palooza? <laughs> 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 we were dropping the PA. It's just Luza. <laughs> Pozole Luza. <laughs> because if you're not here, you're a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Luza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, happy holidays uh, from all of us here, and uh, yeah, if you're not here, hey, wish you were beer. yeah, wish <laughs> wish you were beer. So, cheers and pass the phone on. I feel like everyone's tired of my voice already, but uh, fuck you to whoever didn't show up, and uh, I can't wait for the Pasole part of Pasole Palooza. <laughs> wait, there's one more person. What's this? That was Nick. <laughs> Big Nick Dick. Big Nick Dick. I guess I call him that, but I. <laughs> yeah. I just said it because of that. So fuck you guys if you're thinking that. All right. This is True Your Beer. Pozole Palooza. You ain't here. You a loser. And we out. I, I have to explain my comment. That last line, by the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd been there for like two hours. We're all, we're all drinking. Have a good time. But we're starting to get a little hungry. I was like, when's the fucking Pasoli getting passed out, you know? And so he does this voicemail. So I was like, hey, we're having a fun time at Pasoli Palooza. Just wait for the Pasoli part of Pasoli Palooza. And then shortly thereafter, we ate. It was good times. That's awesome. Good good Pasoli? Oh, my God. It was so good. I and know I know how you talk about your Pasoli. Yeah, it was so good. And on top of it, his mom also surprised us and made some tamales, too. Oh, no kidding. Homemade tamales, man. Jesus Christ. So good. That's awesome. Yeah, we took some home, had some for breakfast. It was delicious. Sounds like a good hangover cure. Yeah, so it was a good time. The A18 guys brought multiple of their barrel-aged, uh, what's it called, Varhalla. It's a barrel-aged beer that, like, different barrels, they put different adjuncts into. Like, there was a vanilla one, a cocoa, a cacao one. Uh, I forget what the other one was. But really fun, really good stuff. Uh, Chew had a bunch of beers. I Oh, I, we made the Pasole beer, and I, I bottled it for the event and brought it down, and it was surprisingly not bad. I, I think I talked about it on here. like I had low expectations for it because it had peppers in it, and I hate spicy beers, but um, surprisingly not bad. It, uh, it basically just tastes like a Mexican lager. Pretty pretty crisp, pretty solid. Even the A18 guys were like, this is not a bad beer. I'd definitely drink it. I was like, dang, dude. So, that's Look at you. Yeah, brewing, I know. Brewing I like, some right. high praise beer. Yeah, a compliment of the night right there. Love so. that shit. So that was fun. Uh, like I said, good food. and so you, didn't, you, you didn't even need a ride home. You could have just fucking flew home on that high. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Everybody jump on. <laughs> Get you some. Yeah, who needs Red Bull when you got compliments? <laughs> so my my ego feeds on compliments. <laughs> I mean, really, is there is there anything better than brewing a, a home like a homebrew beer and then having seriously brewers be like, "Hey, this isn't that bad. I would drink this." No, somehow, like as soon as that was said, like my dick started hitting my kneecaps. It was, <laughs> it was all over. Uh, good for you. Yeah, it was it was pretty good. So uh, I would definitely brew that again. I honestly, I'd even put just slightly more pepper because you you got it. Just the slightest hint of pepper at the very end, like as it started to warm up on your tongue. Are you hearing but yourself talk right now? I don't want the spice. I just wanted the flavor. He just wanted the flavor. And, and I just wanted a hint of flavor. And I just, I wish you could taste it just slightly, ever so slightly stronger. Like, I don't, I don't remember the exact numbers, but let's say we put four peppers in. I wish we would have put five, you know, wow. something like okay. that. Like okay. just a, just a hint more maybe. So anyways, it's a good time. And. And uh, killed the keg on that. Like, I kegged it, carved it, and then bottled it and brought almost all the bottles. I saved one for uh, Monica and James because they couldn't be there. I've also saved one for Deb and Brian. And then, of course, the keg was empty. So I, I brewed another beer last week and brewed a, a brown ale, which I haven't brewed in a long time. In fact, I haven't brewed in so long. I, I The local brew shop, if you send them your recipe, they're like they'll get it ready for you. And you can just come pick it up. And uh, <laughs> he's like, yeah, we, we haven't had those hops in a long time. And I was wow. Like, Ooh, I was like, I haven't brewed this beer in a long time. He's like, yeah, we don't have that yeast either. I was like, all right, I'll do this instead and this instead. So yeah. brewed my, my brown ale. Brown ale was like, uh, that was one style of beer that took me a really long time to finally enjoy. Oh, really? Yes. I love it. I hated brown ales. That's, that's one of the few styles that I liked early in my craft beer experience. And I still like, cause like early in my craft beer experience, I really liked Hefeweizens and I okay. can't fucking drink them anymore. That's shocking. But, like, but brown ales, and like I liked them then, I like them now, and not enough people make them. See, and that's me with amber. Yeah. It was something with the, the brown ales, like the roasty and the malty. 
Like it just didn't agree with me. And then it was two two trick or treats ago, two Halloweens ago. I uh, like a dad. I know I got kids. Um, <laughs> I, we brought up. Uh, I think my sister in law's husband bought the new Glarus sampler mm. pack or variety pack, and it had the fat squirrel in it, and that's their brown ale. And uh, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna fucking crack this and I'm gonna try it out. And it was really fucking enjoyable. And then I was nice. like, well, I guess after you know 13 years of drinking beer, I finally like brown ale. <laughs> I can t- I mean, look. They're they're easy to make, but for some reason, not everybody makes them well. Like you can you can get a bad brown ale and that that totally turns you off. I like a good one. Like one of my favorites is from Mammoth Brewing. They're double nut brown, and while the name sounds a little homoerotic, it's I feel like a, I feel like a lot of breweries have like a nut brown. Mm-hmm. I call mine D's nuts brown. I like it. Yeah. So uh, that'll be ready in a few weeks. So can't wait for that. Uh, and then lastly, I will say. Don't forget, live show, January 13th, Petals and Pints for the Guava Goza. You got a name for this beer? No. In fact, you know, it's funny. I'm glad you mentioned that. I need help with the name. (laughs) I've decided, like, I'll put together, like, a small little swag pack or something if if the name we choose is your name. Yeah, I got stickers and keychains and that kind of shit. I'll put a little something together for you and um, help us name it. Mail at craftbeerrepublic.com. Send us in your name submissions. It's a Goza with Guava. So Guava Goza. Guava or pink guava? Is there a non-pink guava? I don't know. I get like a green guava in at work. I don't know. Oh, fuck. I don't know. But the brewery, like I said, Petals and Pints. So, you know, if you keep it on theme with that, I'm sure they'd like it even better, but not necessary. Or if it's somehow on theme with Craft Beer Republic, you know. Yeah. You know what you could do is just do guava, but change the A to an E, like in Goza. (laughs) Guava. So it would look like guave, but it's really just guave. guava. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Do not everybody. send me a swag pack. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> we are not using that name. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Oof. It's been a long night, huh? Yeah, you're welcome for that. <laughs> you know, gold. So, gold s- somebody just laughed right there, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to take that one to my grave. Somebody just laughed at you, not with you. Hey, whatever. They laughed, Greg. A laugh is a laugh, isn't you're, it? You're welcome, person. <laughs> You've been entertained. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, you not welcome. entertained? <laughs> They're like, eh, maybe. <laughs> oh, God. Well, let's uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's break up the entertainment with an important question. Well, actually, not an important question. More like a follow-up to getting cheap on beer. <laughs> Boozing on a budget. We can't buy pockets like you know this. Boozing. Budget beer on tap. It's hopeless. We are so bad. Beer so fly. Can't buy. You know this. Boozing. Pops and malts. Oh my. Stay focused. Boozing on a budget. I am so glad Flex chose this beer because I haven't played that song in so long. Well, there's a funny story about this beer. A couple funny stories. Let's it's, hear it's, it. a, it's a full circle thing. So, uh, sometimes my, my wife is cool and it... Uh, uh, that came out wrong. So, <laughs> sometimes my wife enables like my, my beer thingy, right? My beer sure, interest, yeah. craft beer. So, we went to Trader Joe's a couple weeks ago. And... She's always like, you know, I was going to start looking at the beer and she's like, hey, I just want to look through here and here and we can come back around and look at this. And I was like, okay, that's pretty sweet. Like, I'm going to look at beer and she's totally cool with it. So they had all these uh, bomber stouts, right? On the top shelf, <laughs> top shelf yeah. stuff, man. And uh, <laughs> they were three ninety eight dollars for, a, you know, a 22 ounce bomber. And it was like a baklava or bop bob baklava. baklava stout yeah. and uh a tiramisu stout and a 12 month barrel aged stout and the baklava and the tiramisu stouts are like three dollars and 98 cents a bottle and all i did was find the abv on the bottle it was eight <laughs> percent i'm thinking 398 for eight percent 20 that's stupid right that's like <laughs> that's fucking algorithm, right. and 
So I, I picked up this tiramisu because I figured I liked the adjuncts in it because I'm a douchebag like that. And You're an adjunct junkie. Yeah, it, it's like a cartoony piece of tiramisu, and it, it's definitely algorithm worthy, right? Yeah. ABV, the price, the, the bottle art, I guess, here. So I bought it, and I just kind of, like, kept it aside. Like, didn't really have plans on drinking it anytime soon. Figured it's a beer I got at Trader Joe's, and it was three ninety eight. So then Greg said, hey, what beer are you drinking on the show tonight? And I said, you know what? I said, this I, I might be drinking this Trader Joe's tiramisu stout. And I looked it up on Untapped to find out that Greg actually rated this beer two years ago and i said you know what three years ago was it i thought it was yeah it was january 2020 oh my gosh so almost three years ago and i said you know what i gotta fucking drink this beer so that is the full circle story of this and i believe it's uh, campanology am i saying that right yeah campanology brewing uh apparently wanakee wisconsin is that uh accurate Mm -hmm. i mean it says it on the bottle it, it It's a um, contract brewing situation. Correct. I, a, I did a bunch of research. Well, like three years ago, I did a bunch of research. And, well, I, I couldn't I, find the actual brewery. So I'm assuming what went on is they signed a contract with Untitled Art, who does a lot of contract brewing. I don't think it was Untitled. I forget who it was. I looked o- it up. Octopi? Yes. Yes. They're like all, it's like a, they're all in cahoots. Okay. Like Octopi and Untitled Art, and I think there's one more. Okay. Because um, I know they do brewing for like humble forager and they do brewing for collective arts every now and then um so now that all makes sense so anyway greg rated this beer a four hmm. 4.0 oh and out of over four thousand ratings it's got a three eight so it's it's that's not bad yeah not for, bad uh, for a beer you find on a, a shelf at trader joe's for three dollars and 98 cents everybody which when i got it i think it was under two dollars and that's insane yeah. So it's inflation. It's pretty simple. It is a stout brewed with vanilla and chocolate. Uh, it says this is dessert in a bottle. Pour over vanilla ice cream or pair with cannoli or a slice of tiramisu. Um, I'm doing none of that, and I'm just drinking it. <laughs> I love tiramisu as a dessert. It's not. It's not my top dessert. Mm. It's probably more towards the bottom. I'm like a big cheesecake guy. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's just what I do. Uh, yeah. But smelling this beer, it is a lot of chocolate and vanilla, just like they say on the bottle. Um, it's actually almost more fudgy than it is chocolate. Hmm. Um, but that's just like the pretentious asshole of me. So now we will dive right in. So this is a lot more carbonated for a stout than I would usually okay. like. It's quite effervescent. Mm-hmm. But the chocolate notes are humongous on it. It is a bit roasty. You get the vanilla towards the back end and uh, not one single bit of that 8% ABV. So if you were to pour this for me at a bottle share and then say, what would you think about this beer? I would never think, hey, it's a $4 bomber at Trader Joe's. Sure. You know, like this is definitely like a more than mediocre beer. Uh, It's a very enjoyable stout. I'm actually almost finished with the, the 22 ounces and we're you know, who knows how long into the show, but, uh, Six yeah, I, I, I would say this is a pretty, a, a pretty decent drinking beer. And if you do see it out there, I would suggest fucking grabbing a bottle because you can't go yeah. wrong. I remember enjoying it. So I looked it up. We, we had it on batch 184, uh, in January, January 21st. It was a lot of batches ago. A lot of batches ago. I think it was called something else at that point. We won't get into that. And at the time, I found the original um, untapped stats that I pulled at that time. It had a uh, 383 on untapped and had a 92 on Beer Advocate. So, wow. Yeah. That's impressive. The, the Beer Advocate. That's Yeah. So it sounds like it stayed around the same. 8% still 8%. So, um, yeah, I got to go find I know they still have it. I haven't had it since then. I, sh- I should go find one. Yeah, I suggest you do that. I, it's been a while. You know, and I'm not a big stout guy. You know, and every, anybody who listens to the show knows that. Yeah, because you're a haze um, boy. I, I am, and I, I'm proud of it. But <laughs> this beer is very, very enjoyable. I remember it being pretty fucking good, so... Uh, I just, honestly, I just wish idea. it was a little less carbonated. That's that's about it. Yeah, that could be a little bit of a turnoff, especially with a desserty beer. Uh-huh. 
So. Kind of like yeah. that slicker, smoother, silkier mouthfeel to it. But yeah, uh, but yeah I'll, I'll take this one and run, man. Campanology does some good. I mean, look, I haven't had them probably since I had that tiramisu one, but like I've had a few of their beers. They're all boozing on a budget and they put out some good stuff. And maybe it's like you said, maybe it's untitled art people making it. So it would make sense at that point. But yeah. uh, but not uh, not shabby. If you see any Campanology at Trader Joe's, give it a shot. Yeah, maybe honestly, I'll find do, another one. It's like homework for anybody. Like if you are at a Trader Joe's, just yeah, you know, pull out the Abraham Lincoln and just try it out. <laughs> <laughs> the Babraham Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very nice. Uh, all right. We'll get a couple of news stories before we get to these lists. Uh, there was a serial drunk dialer in New Zealand. His name was Gregory. What an asshole. Shocker. Yeah. Uh, he appeared in the, oh, oh God, Omaru District Court this week following an incident on November 6th when he called... I guess their 911 is 111, which makes sense. It's much easier to do, you know? It really is. Yeah. Fucking New Zealanders. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, he called 111 to report four people brawling at his home. Arriving within one minute of the call and expecting to break up a fight, police found uh, Gregory eh, alone <laughs> and asleep. At the time, the defendant was too intoxicated to provide police with an explanation. He was arrested and taken to the... <sighs> Omaru police station to sober up. Upon checking his details, police confirmed that the fictitious report had originated from his phone. Judge Jim Large, that's a porn name if I've ever heard one, <laughs> addressed the defendant saying, clearly alcohol is one of the driving factors of your offending. The defendant had 13 convictions of Ooh. making malicious calls to emergency services, the court heard. The court is running out of options, Mr. Gear. We'll come, Gregory. You were told if you ever did it again, you would go to jail. The defendant had recently experienced hard times with his mother dying earlier in the year, leaving him with nowhere to go and no emotional support. He admitted he shouldn't have done it and said alcohol was partly to blame. This kind of offending wasted everybody's time and put people who needed police attention at risk. The judge said, you don't know what situation you are pulling them away from. Gregory was shown leniency and sentenced to two years of intensive supervision. And he, and the judge assured him that this would be his final warning. So don't get drunk and dial 911. So he's prank calling the cops. <laughs> Basically. 14 times. 14 times. I tell you what, three years ago when I got my new iPhone. Yeah. They had that uh, the emergency call the when you triple, triple clicked the hold yeah. button. Yeah. Did you do it? Accidentally at yeah. three in the morning when I was trying to snooze my alarm. <laughs> and my phone, you know, the alert sound where it's like, wah, wah, yeah, yeah. Wah, it started going off and I had no idea what the fuck was going on. So I turned off my phone and to find out that I called 911. Sure. And then. They probably called you back, right? They did. I yeah. actually went to the bathroom and I turned the shower on because I was trying to get ready for work. And I let the shower run and I was standing outside waiting to see if they were going to call back and sure enough they did and they were like hey you know did you just call us how can we help you like what's wrong and i'm just like i'm such an idiot i just got a new phone and i tried turning my alarm off and i called you guys instead i'm like i'm so sorry i feel like such an idiot and they're just it was just like immediately like hang up there was no like that's like, okay you. or like i understand it's just like nope just like click like they got better yeah. shit to do they're like, fuck you, Mr. A beer. Yeah. Never again. And they're probably just like, what a stupid, stupid feature on a phone. But well, I had a similar situation happen to me. Do you have an Apple Watch? Yes. Okay. Have you updated it recently? Uh, the, Whatever the last update was, I don't know. So like back in... So if anybody who has an Apple Watch, there's two buttons on the side. One's like the main crown, as they call it. And then there's a button that's like flush with the watch. And back in the day, in order to turn off or restart your watch, you would push the one that's flush with your watch, and then it would come up with a little slider to power it off, and you would slide it off. Well, there was an update released in September, October, where now, if you hold down that flush button, you get an SOS slider. And I did not know it when I first, Lex is doing it right now. Wow. <laughs> so I didn't know this. So I needed to restart my watch. I hit the button. And I just saw the slider pop up. I wasn't paying attention. 
And I swiped it, and then all of a sudden it said calling SOS. And I was like, oh, oh God, oh, fuck. So, like, I hang up immediately. Too late. They call me back, and I freaked out and hung up. And they call me back again. I was like, I got to answer. Otherwise, they're going to send cops out. Yeah. So, I answered, and they're like, hi, number one, did you call us? And I, I basically did what you did. I was like, hi, I'm so sorry. I'm such an idiot. I accidentally did the SOS thing from my watch. Everything is okay. And she's like, all right, thank you. Click. Yep. Yep. And I was like, fuck, they're probably still going to send somebody out because it's like, maybe it was, you know, my wife that was calling SOS and she's, you know, being abused by me or something. No one came out, luckily. No one. (laughs) My wife. My wife. Yeah. So no one showed up. I was like, oh my God. So now I'm very careful when I restart my watch. Yeah. I'm glad you told me that. I did not know that. Yeah, I I found out the hard way, so uh, don't do what I did, everybody, because I'm dumb. Stupid right. Apple. Yes. Yeah, I mean, but you? you know what? I'm sure that's probably saved a few people, right? Yeah, look, I'm glad it's a feature, and I'm glad it's so easy to dial 911 if you're in a, in a predicament, but we were so set on how we did one thing that to then make that the SOS, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe something different could have been done. Because now when you, you press it, you see the SOS, but at the very top of the screen is your power button. It's a button small power icon, yeah. Yeah, I was not paying attention, and I just updated my watch. So uh, I also hope this warning. helps somebody who's trying to turn their watch right. off. <laughs> Don't be dumb like me. I, I, I wish I could tell you I was hammered. I was sober as could be. It was like 10 in the morning when I did it. So. It's an honest mistake. It was, I swear. All right, a couple lists for you. First is the top 10 craft breweries. With the most five star check ins of 2022. Is it Campanology? <laughs> Number one, Campanology. <laughs> this, of course, comes from Untapped. We'll start off with number 10, Dogfish Head. Okay. 11, I, I assume their minute IPAs are. Yeah, the 120, right? if you're looking to get fucked up, is an easy way what to What do they go. do? 60, 90, 120? Yeah, 120 is like it varies from year to year, but it's between 16 and 20 percent. Okay, I have I have a 2016 in my fridge. Hey, you come on out here, I'll crack open crack a 2016. It? Jeez, yeah. Uh, number nine, Yingling Brewery. Yeah, I like it, but a five star. I just don't get it. Yeah, number eight, Sierra Nevada. Uh, I don't s- get that either. I mean, look, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale is a fucking classic. Yes, that's it, though, right? Yeah. I mean, look, I like hazy little thing. My wife likes the sour little thing, but five stars. No. But five stars, yeah. Like that's like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like you said pale ale, hazy little thing. If yeah, I'll grab that in a pinch, no problem. Yeah. But five it's stars, a great little hazy, and and the sour little thing is great for the lake. It's a great floating beer, but five stars seems a little much. Uh, love you, Sierra Nevada, though. Seriously, number seven. Sam Adams, even more confusing Get the fuck than out Sierra of here. Nevada. Unless yeah. these are all like Oktoberfest five star ratings. Yeah. We're just a bunch of people from Baston. Ah, oh, we love that fucking Sam Adams, eh? Give me that Boston Lager. <laughs> the the Van Duzas love their Sam Adams. Hey Tom! Tom, I just rated another five star. <laughs> Way to go, Billy. <laughs> I don't know why Billy popped up. Uh number six. Here we go. Toppling Goliath. That's legit. Mm-hmm. I do love. I, I actually, I would say, I love Toppling Goliath. I I really like some Toppling Goliath beer. Number five, The Alchemist. Okay, I get it. Hey, Topper, focal, focal banger, banger Heady Topper, yeah, yep. classic. Number four, Other Half Brewing. Yeah, hype, it's like, I get yeah. it. Super hype. Number three, Russian River Brewing. Okay, do you think that's hype too? I mean, yeah, I mean, well, people think like Other Half and Art. They both do good stuff. But I've never yeah, had I, anything from either that like I you know you know like you with the the beer earlier, you know you yeah. took a sip of it and your eyes just popped open. I, that that's never happened to me with either of those breweries. So maybe yeah. I'm just not drinking the right stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I, maybe so. Uh, but I I just read other half Russian right? River. Russian River. I mean, eight point eight percent. Everybody. Uh, I will say this about Russian River. I fucking love their sours. Their sour program is chef's kiss. And they that's so something good. you never hear about. Yeah, you don't. They, well, they don't distribute as much with the sours. Um, and they're not like hype fruited 450 North slushies, you know? They're like legit barrel aged sours. And they're just at the bee's knees. Here's, here's one I don't get. And they're not craft anymore. Number two, Bell's Brewery. See, uh, the only thing I could think of again is the Oktoberfest. <laughs> 
Well, they had that two hearted ale, which passed Pliny as like the best beer in the nation a couple I, years ago. I don't understand because it's it's fi- it's a hype thing. It's fine, but there's again, there's nothing you 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 can't tell me you get like ten random people lined up and you give them all a glass of two hearted ale and they're gonna be like, "Wow, this is the best beer I've ever had in my life." Look, I, I'm with you. I've had two hearted ale many a time. It's good. It's not right. I would it's say good. Five, five, five out of ten. Rough, but it's it's serviceable. It's a it's a it's a yeah it's an average average beer. It's, it's just a good beer. It's not a great beer. Here we go. Number one, Inflex's new favorite brewery <laughs> of the last week, Treehouse Brewing. That that's pretty legit. I mean, talk about hype. They they own the hype. They own the hype, but I mean, make some good beers. Jesus, Pete's man, they they really do it. <laughs> I was lucky early on in the show. We used to have um, it's the beer girl from Instagram on the show, and she lived out near. She was in Massachusetts, so she would send me some some tree houses. Good stuff, man. I got a two or three from her. Never a bad day when those popped up in the mail. Oh no, I'm happy. I'm happy to say I've I've tr- finally tried the hype. That's basically. You know, that, that, that's the thing with hype breweries across the nation that, like, aren't local to you. Yeah. And all you ever do is, like, hear, wow, these beers are so good, or this brewery's so good. Hype, 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 hype. You're like, is but it really? Is it really? Yeah. You know? Okay. Treehouse puts out some great beers. I can't say anything bad. I got I got yeah. nothing to, nothing bad to I, say. I've thoroughly enjoyed all the Treehouse I've had, so. Uh, all right. And then this uh, final list, also from Untapped, the top 10 craft beers with the most five-star check-ins of 2022. These aren't all craft. Number 10, Duvel. Look, it's a solid beer. It's like the standard 3,796 five-star check-in. Number nine, Hop Slam Ale. Bell's Brewing. Bell's Brewing, yeah. Uh, number eight, Vocal Banger. Classic. Delicious. Number seven, Trappist Westville. <laughs> Yeah, from <laughs> Brewery de Sint. Get that? That you fucking nailed it. Nailed it. So good. Uh, number six, King Julius. Okay. 4,574 yeah. five star check ins. Number five, huh. Zombie Dust. Uh, it's fine. See, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. It's not, it's not five stars. It's not. It's, it's fine. It's good. It's serviceable. Like yeah. that, but that, it's, a, it's a serviceable malted pale ale yeah it's like a little bit i don't know maltier than uh alpha king <laughs> yeah i don't know if i've had alpha king okay but yeah it's just I, I i had the zombie dust once it was years ago and it just it was fine it was good it wasn't travel across the country good have i ever told you the story about when i, I stopped at a liquor store and i had seen it in a six pack and it was 19.99 a six pack at bottles and there was a sign on the, the the cooler door that said, must purchase three other Three Floyds products <laughs> with zombie dust. <laughs> and I... Did you? N- no. <laughs> I, I took one six pack of the Alpha King, which is another pale ale of theirs, and I took it to the counter, and there was this hipster motherfucker working the register. Of course and I said, hey... That sign on the door is pretty funny. And he just looks at me with his bold frame glasses of the straight face and he's like, Why is it funny? Oh. <laughs> I said, Well, you gotta you gotta buy the the other stuff to get the, the stuff. You know, half the fridge. And he goes, Yeah, that's so we keep it in stock. Like, okay, it's not funny, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. Also, I love that whole thing where like we need to keep it in stock. It's like, don't you just want to fucking sell it? Don't like- you just in nineteen ninety nine a six pack? Yeah. That's obnoxious. Yeah, seriously. Uh, so that was number five with 4,999 five-star check-ins. Number four, Two Hearted Ale from Bell's Brewery. Oh, man. Tell me what you think of this one. And number three, Traditional Lager from Yingling Brewery. I don't get it. <laughs> Look, I like it. I like it a lot, but... You know, I got a lot of friends. It's also not craft anymore. Who, anytime they see Yingling, they, like, freak out. <laughs> Look, and when I, I'm on the East Coast, I'll order the shit out of it. Because we don't get it out here. It just does nothing for me. If I just, I've seen it on a menu, good lager. I think it was on a menu when I was in uh, Nashville. Mm, I bet it was. And I passed the fuck up on that. 
Yeah, I had a I have a friend that lives in Washington D.C. I haven't seen her in a few years, but back in the day we'd go out there every couple of years and visit her, and and she'd always have Yingling in the fridge, and I drink the shit out of it. But it's it's just a good lager. There's nothing to write home about. Five stars. Five stars. Number two, Heady Topper. Okay. Nine thousand nine hundred ninety-four five stars. Five star check-ins. Can you guess the number one? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. <laughs> Nailed it. No, just kidding. Uh, number one, with 10,635 five star check ins, Pliny the Elder. Oh, wow. How does that make think, you feel local? I think The Alchemist is better. Hetty Topper. Well, I wouldn't know. I think Hetty Topper is better. I think Focal Banger is better. If you want to go Russian River, I think Blind Pig is better. I think all of their sours are better. Pliny the Younger is better. Um, there. Blasphemous. You've heard it here, folks. You've had Pliny, right? Have you had Pliny? I've had... Uh, the Elder? No. No? <sighs> Hoppy something. Happy Hops? Yep. That's a good one. I no, like that, that was really good. I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Yeah. Yeah. But that was the only Russian River I ever had. Oh. I'll, one of these days, I'll send you some Pliny, just so you can say you've had it. So yeah. It's yeah. fine. It's good. It's a good beer. Look, I'm not talking shit about it. No, it's nobody's just, saying you are. Nobody's accusing yeah. you. It's just the amount of hype it gets to me. Like, have you guys tried Blind Pig? Like, good Lord, Blind Pig is delicious. Like, that's the sad, like, that's what I, I would say grinds my gears most about hype beer. Is Tell that Peter. It, uh, it, it shies everybody away from actual good beer, you know? And it's just yeah. like, and then these, these five-star ratings, they get posted mostly due to the hype. Right, exactly. You know, so it's like, oh, yeah, everybody, I've heard this beer is really good. And then they drink it, and then you're like, wow, yeah, that's good. <laughs> right. Five stars. Yeah, I agree. Five stars all Five around. stars. Yeah, it, it's good. I mean, four stars. You know, like, whatever. It's whatever. Like, it's a really good beer. It's a solid example of that style. You know what I try and think when I rate a beer, if I'm being honest, right? Because yeah. untaps on a five-star scale. I try and think of what I would rate it out of a scale of 10, right? Okay. Because even a, a beer that you would rate seven out of 10... That's a three and a half on Untapped. Yeah. Which, in true. hindsight, that's not, that not a horrible rating. Right. So, you gotta start thinking outside the box. Well, the Booze League likes to give me a lot of shit, because they give a lot of three seven fives. I'm like, three seven five is actually a good rating. Especially, like you said, if you, if you do it out of ten. Yeah. That's, my, that's usually my thought process on it. Yeah. Although, I don't so. rate often anymore. I feel like I that's a lot I'm, of people. Nowadays, I'm almost never on Untapped. Like I, I haven't checked something in forever. It's just I want to drink it, and enjoy it. You know, maybe take a picture for the gram because I'm a whore to the gram. Well, and I'm trying to become a whore again. Let me help you, <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with those lists, we're really banging this one out. <laughs> yeah. Rough and fast. I think I'll hit some music over here. We will say hi to Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. Ooh, starting off the new year creepy. Hey, you gotta, you gotta bring it back. <laughs> I'll tell you when to check us out <laughs> at Craft Beer Republic and at Flex Me a Beer underscores in between each one. Of course, craft, craftbeerrepublic.com. And don't forget, debsdicks.com. Debsdicks.com. <laughs> Go visit I will, it now. I will get something up there just because uh, how could you not? You know what? Send, get something send, up. send Greg a famous dick. Any famous dick you know. Yeah. Send Greg a famous Faces. Dick. Faces. Famous dick faces, please. Not not <laughs> famous dick dicks. <laughs> please. Uh, don't forget, January 13th at Petals and Pints. I do believe that's just about everything. Oh, mail at crappyrepublic.com. Send us your uh, your beer names for the Guava Goza. We need help. Lots of help. So, All right. I hope everyone out there is staying very well hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.